In fact, the title of my presentation was Observe Climate Variability, but uh, I have to, to recognize that I was not very involved in the decision of what title should be. And in fact, my, <laughs> my talk is more something about the functioning of the Mediterranean Sea and why I think it's important for all the models to keep this in mind in order to improve our models. So it's, it's a, a different approach for the, for the model evaluation. So uh, the problems have a, uh, the models have a problem and it's, they are too nice. So uh, we can be tempted to think that uh, this kind of results that we have in the, for, the, for the salinity, maybe they are pretty good. I mean, it, they seem pre, uh, logical, they, seem, they look good. And um, obviously the model, we produce something which is consistent with the physical law, so we have something that makes sense. But, um, but the, the, the system can have a lot of equilibrium points. So uh, we can easily be in a, in a reasonable, physical, uh, sounded uh, state, which is not the, the true state. So uh, for this, uh, I think um, we have to, to do a step back and, and really think about the functioning of the system and try to think, to evaluate the model in terms of, of if it's fulfilling the basics of the system we are studying. So, uh, and then there was also the climate in word in the title, but this is a bit tricky. I mean, what is climate? Um, well, uh, some, some from meteorology, they, they usually define climate as the slow variant, the slow, slow changes of a system. In this case, we could say, okay, the slow variant aspects of the, of the ocean, ocean system. Also, um, in some cases, they just take uh, talk about uh, statistical description of the weather systems, uh, either atmospheric or ocean. But this is quite flu. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not very clear what, what means low and what means a statistical description. And also, or even there are another one that is simply, if you can divide by 30 years your results, mean you are describing climate. So, but um, the fact is that things cannot be um, separated. And really, uh, if we want to produce good climate simulations, we have to focus also on the, on the, on the, on the quick, on the, on the fast and short scale processes because they have an influence on the long scales and the other way around. So most of what I'm going to talk here uh, can apply either for the climate simulations or to the, to the operational systems or our best in scale. Okay, uh, first, uh, it's mandatory to start with the water budget of the Mediterranean, and for this purpose, we can think this is the Mediterranean. Okay. Um, basically, we, we live in a bathtub where we have the Strait of Gibraltar, and where uh, what we have is that we have, an ex um, we have more evaporation. We are removing, uh, the system is removing water through evaporation, more water than the one that is put into the system through precipitation, the Black Sea contribution of the river runoff. So uh, what we have basically, and most of you probably you're, you're familiar with that, is that we, we, we have a salinization of the, of the basin, and the water that is, is lost is replaced uh, through Gibraltar by um, Atlantic water. But then something happens here in the Strait of Gibraltar where we have two water masses with different densities. So really what happens is we don't have a, a, a single net inflow, but we have a two-layer uh, transport, which in, turns, uh, which in, in, in turn uh, ends up like uh, with a recirculation. So basically, this could be a first sketch of what the Mediterranean works, how the Mediterranean works in terms of the water budget. If we go to Gibraltar, then things are not so, so easy. Um, First, here in the narrowest point, we only have 14 kilometers. Uh, and, and there are different seals here. So the transfer of water from one side to the other is far from being a straightforward. I mean, and this is a problem because most models, even uh, those relatively high resolution, I mean three kilometers, still see the, the street of Gibraltar like a pipe, while it's not. And uh, there are some works saying, suggesting that at least we will need 500 meters and uh, to, to be able to solve the most important processes occurring in the, in the strait. And, um, and I'm not going into detail on, in this, but uh, just to, to keep in, 
in the back of your mind if never you have to deal with Mediterranean models and the transports in Gibraltar. Um, Q1 and 2, this is the, the inflow, the outflow. So the net transport should uh, balance the, the water that is lost by, through, the, through, the, through the surface. Um, then the density difference is linked to a series of parameters. And just keep this. Bit, yeah, there's one part that depends on the geometry of the Mediterranean basin and also of the strait. One part that depends on the climatology, that means the buoyancy flux, so the, the, the water that we are removing. And also there is a parameter here which has to, uh, it's related to the hydraulic control in the, in the Strait of Gibraltar. So I mean, if the Gibraltar Strait was a, a pipe, uh, we, we, won't have, we will not have this term here, but it is. And also the outflow is also linked to different terms which also uh, relates to geometry, climatology and hydraulics. So if our model is not able to produce to have reasonable values for all these parameters, then we cannot expect to have the, the correct, uh, the, the right change. And also, in the, in the state of Gibraltar, even if the Mediterranean is microtidal, tides in the G state of Gibraltar are very strong and are producing um, uh, strong variability. And it's not just something that when you average out, um, okay, you forget about it, but really there are some residuals that are the, excuse me, the blue lines here, which are related to the, to the water entrainment and mixing among layers. So uh, just to, to keep in your, mind that, in your mind that really the state of Gibraltar is a complex issue and uh, we have to evaluate if our models are able to produce it, reproduce it properly and if not, what's the impact on our simulations. And one example, quick example is, these are uh, two simulations, one with tides and with one without tides, uh, performed, um, and this is the, the, temperature, uh, the temperature difference, and you can see that there are huge temperature differences up to two degrees uh, just because of the inclusion of tides. So tides are mixing the inflow and the outflow, so the, the result is that the water that is entering into the Mediterranean is denser than the one that, that it should, should be without the, the tidal mixing. And this, it's been shown, that has impact also, not only around Gibraltar Strait, but also uh, for, the, for the generation of the ends water formation as far as, far as in the northwestern Mediterranean. Another, another important thing characteristic of the Mediterranean are the, the IRC fluxes. Um, then we, we used to, to just talk about average numbers when we talk about climate, but the fact is that the, this is the the evaporation minus precipitation in, in an ensemble of models, the, the, the average of an ensemble of models, atmospheric models, and you can see that the, the huge differences all along the, across the basin. So we are going from 1.5 meter per year to minus uh, 20 centimeters. So, um, and then all this average as a, about 0 0.6, 0 0.7 meters. And also for the, for the heat flux, so there are areas like the Gulf of Lyons or the Aegean Sea, the, the Eastern Mediterranean, where we have uh, a net, uh, a huge net heat loss. Um, but also, I mean, it's, it's, it's concentrated in, in several places. Again, uh, and, and this is important because this is, um, I mean, the heat flux, the total heat flux is the, is the Combination is the combination of different components, the short wave, long wave, latent and sensible. And for the Mediterranean, you can see how different are these magnitudes. Sorry with the sign, it's not right here. But uh, in the end, all this add up, adds up as ma minus nine watts per meter square. But you can see that we are adding and subtracting things that are much bigger than that. So the errors in any of these terms uh, have a strong impact on the net flux, which can be see in the, seen in the uncertainties that are linked to this value. Then all these, the water mass, uh, the, the, the IOC fluxes are, are relevant because are what, what are determining the, um, the water mass formation. The Mediterranean is one of the few places in the world where water mass uh, are formed. And in particular, uh, we, we have, well, we have convention, convection. This is quite straightforward, but Either we have a heat loss, so temperatures decrease and density increases, and it's basically, not only, but basically what occurs with the winter intermediate water, western Mediterranean deep water, uh, and the eastern Mediterranean deep water. 
um, and or we have uh, water loss uh, that in means increasing salinity also density increases and we we produce water that, that sinks which is what happens basically in the levant intermediate water so in the end our system our two layer system is a bit more complex we have the Atlantic waters going in the in the upper layer with salinity that is changing th because of mixing along its path. Levantine intermediate water basically that goes the other way around, and then we have deep waters form that remains in the in the in the bottom of the of the of the sub basins. But again, this is simplification. If we go to the to the three D plot, something more realistic. What we have is something like this. Really, the the Water mass formation doesn't occur everywhere. It's localized in the Gulf of Lyons in the Western Mediterranean, the Levantine Basin in the South Adriatic. So we have all this 3D conveyor belt, which is quite like the, the global conveyor belt. That's why a um, lot of people talk about the Mediterranean as a miniature ocean in miniature, because we have all the features that happen at the global scale, but in, in a very more <coughs> familiar scale. And, uh, but one of the problems of this is that this is obviously an artistic view of what happens, but really it's very, very difficult to measure this. And um, so we need models. And here what I showed you is a, a schematic view of this circulation. These are uh, boxes, uh, Western Mediterranean, Eastern Mediterranean, different layers. In red, we have the heat transport, and in green, the salt transport. And these are the results from a, an ensemble of regional models in the framework of Metcordex project. Um, so in, in, on average, we have this, this uh, circulation with some transfer to the, the, sorry, to the deeper layers, which is something that agrees with, uh, with, with the literature and what we know about the, the system. But the thing is, you have to see the, the huge differences in the, in the, the in among models, I mean, this is spread. So um, there are models that are transferring uh, 16 watts on average, but can be between zero and, and 40. So it means this thermal in circulation is quite uncertain. We don't know really how many uh, water is transferred and, and so on. And then this, um, these discrepancies in the models um, are quite relevant also for the, for the definition of the, um, of the water masses. I mean, because we are not producing the right amounts of water masses or because the properties are not the right ones, we can, have, we can end up with uh, strong differences in the characteristics of the, of, the, um, of the basin. Here, for instance, what we have is the average temperature profile for the Mediterranean in a bunch of models and the salinity. And you can see the huge difference that we have here. It's not just a matter of having a bias, so we can have the models a bit warmer or colder, but it's really that we have some bumps here that means that we have different water masses. The stratification is different, which means that the heat transfer and salt transfer will be different because in more stratified waters will, have, um, will be more difficult to bring the water down. Uh, down. And with, in salinity, it's even worse. And the reason is, for the salinity, the reason is that the only source of salt in the Mediterranean is the, um, the Gibraltar. I mean, we, we cannot pour salt through the, to the surface. So um, strong uh, differences at the, at, the, at the scale of the Gibraltar, um, Strait of Gibraltar, can make strong differences on how salt is distributed in the, in the Mediterranean. Another important issue of the Mediterranean, the winds. Okay. Uh, surrounding the Mediterranean, we have a lot of mountains, which means that the, the large-scale uh, atmospheric cells or atmospheric structures that are coming from the Atlantic or from Russia are channeled, channeled through the valleys and the, um, and the mountain chains. So we end up with a lot of different winds that have uh, local names like Mistral, Vendavales, Boras, Europa, and so on. And this is an example of how the, the wind pattern looks like. In, in winter, in January, and in June. You can see the, the, how heterogeneous is that. So with this kind of winds, what you can expect is that we have also uh, a complex surface circulation. And this is a, a, a schematic from a reanalysis by Pinardi, which is not 
completely accurate, I have to say, because, uh, I mean, even if it's an analysis, and this is what we suppose to be the, the, the best approach to reality, there are some features that are clearly wrong, like, for instance, in the Catalan Sea, we don't have the Catalan current represented. Um, so uh, we have to take these approaches with, with care. Uh, but then the, the circulation is far from being something stable. We, even in, in the reanalysis, we can see a lot of small structures, mesoscale, a lot of things going on. Okay, so, so again, the definition of a mean state is a bit, is not, is not evident. Um, but even if we go to observation, because this is a, an eddy permitting model, so we are not having a lot of, of a structure here. If we go to ultra high resolution SST, you can see something that I've seen in the, in the plots of the high resolution models, 500 meters or, or even lower uh, high resolution. We have a lot of things going on, what's called submesoscale, which is again something that is not clear uh, what's the role of the sub-mesoscale on the, um, on, the, um, on the whole system, and this is something we are working on. But really, there are much more things going on. Uh, and, and just as an example, so we, at, at, at present, we think that state-of-the-art regional models, or well, the, the, the Mediterranean Basin models, are performing pretty well in terms of the average circulation. But uh, what I'm showing you here, are the, the, um, the virtual displacement of a particle in a point here in the, here in the where, where the red dot is. Uh, and this is like simply the, the accumulation of the velocities through, um, I don't know if a couple of years. And, you, and the different colors represent different models. You can see how different can be the models. So even if all of them are forced basically with the same forcing, and even if they have the same, all of them or most of them are NEMO models or MIT which are pretty similar, um, the difference can be very, very large. So, um, and even, uh, I don't have the plot here, but even comparing reanalysis where we are simulating altimetry and we are supposed to get better, better surface fields, the fact is we are not. I mean, there are a lot of things going on, so it's important to, to use independent data to try to, to evaluate the local patterns of, of circulation. Uh, in the Mediterranean, something else that is going on, and this is also very important, is the topographic influence. The topography can um, modify the stability of the slope currents. Um, there are a lot of mesoscale created by interaction of the, of the jets with the currents and the, I would, sorry, with the, with the coastline or with the um, submarine canyons. And as an example here, I'm showing uh, how simply a wind burst can create an eddy just because of the, of the interaction with the coast. So here we have in the Gulf of Lions, we have a strong uh, Mistral event, which modifies slightly the, the, the density structure here. And by, by flow separation, we end up with an eddy that uh, has been shown that can last for, for a couple of weeks. So just because we have a complex topography, complex coastline, and a very variable wind forcing, we are generating lava structures. So it, what does it mean for modeling? It means that we need high resolution wind forcing to be able to, to produce these kind of uh, small scale uh, structures. Um, and we also need a good representation of bathymetry and coastline. And that's one of the, of the problems that uh, models that have to smooth the bathymetry can have. So if we smooth too much bathymetry, we lose control of the, of the, of the slope currents and we are not producing the same, exactly the same variability. Well, this is about the canyons, but I think I can, can skip. Well, this is also a, a nice example of, there are plenty of them, uh, but this, is, I, I think you cannot see it, but here, you, you have to imagine that there's a submarine canyon here. And this is the, how the canyon, after several days, this is day two and this is day 11, can modify the, um, the vertical velocities around the canyon. So just because we have the canyon, the flow starts destabilizing, and in, after 10 days, you have really strong meanders, meandering and, and mm, vertical velocities either upward or, or downward. And this is because we have this interaction with the topography. So another thing is, is the, um, another important thing about the Mediterranean, especially because I've seen a lot of people are using sea level to validate the models or, or also because sea level is an important variable for, for coastal areas and for, as, a, as a metrics for the climate change. 
Um, yeah, here what, what you are seeing is like uh, um, the, the addition of different, of the total sea level at early frequency. So here we have tides, we have atmospheric tides, atmospheric tide, which is a storm surge, the atmospheric mechanical forcing, and also the mean, the mean field linked to the, to the thermal expansion or circulation. So you can see there are a lot of things going on. All these small bumps are linked to circulation. This pulse is linked to either to atmospheric pressure or to, or to tides. So a lot of things goes on. So when we are comparing the model outputs to tide gauge data, we are comparing the tide gauge gauges are, me are measuring these variations. So we have to, to do these comparisons with care. Um, so the, the sea level can be, can be induced uh, anyway by different factors. One is the astro astronomical tides, you are aware about them, the meteorological tides, or the mechanics, so the, the effect of sea level pressure and winds on sea level. Also the thermal expansion, so if we warm the water, then it expands and have uh, some, yeah, so sea level rises. Then the circulation, uh, changing the, the changing circulation patterns means a redistribution of water masses and also changes on in sea level. And also we can have mass addition. At global scale, it's usually the ice melting, but for the Mediterranean, as we don't have enough ice, is simply because we have more water in the Atlantic that flows in. Um, so here I decomposed animation in the, th in the three components. So this is, these are the stromal tides, these are the the meteorological tides, you can see the difference in the kind of structures. You can see some, some things going on. And here is much more difficult. But uh, if you look carefully, you'll see something that changes. Or not, if you, you, you end up hypnotized. Um, well, and how the models can, can, are, are solving all this? Well, for the tides, well, I would say that the models are pretty good. Okay maybe are not as good as we, we can say if we are focusing as the, on, on them, as Nadia showed. But really, I mean, we are explaining more than 90% of the variance linked to the, to the tides. So this is something in absolute terms that is quite good. For the uh, meteorological tides, the atmospheric forcing, models, the 2D models, even the 2D models are performing quite well. We are able, because we have good atmospheric forcing, we are able to, to, to get a good uh, um, meteorological tide. So, and explaining more than 80%, 80 to 90% in, in tide gauge locations. Then there, is, there are these other terms here, which are more important for the long term scales, long scales, which are the thermal expansion, circulation, and mass addition. Thermal expansion, I mean, if we are talking about the, the seasonal expansion, then models are doing well. I mean, we can capture the, this, this steric, the thermosteric uh, changes uh, along the year quite well. And this is basically because we have good heat fluxes on surface, so this can, can be reasonable. But if we look at internal variations, then things go much worse. And this is because, if you remember what I've shown about the, the discrepancies on the thermal line circulation, on the heat redistribution, so at, at seasonal scale, the heat has no time to, to go to the deeper layers, so Okay, models are not so prone to, to suffer the errors that I, I've, see, I've shown you. But for the interannual scale and longer time scales, this is much worse. Uh, for the mass addition in the Atlantic, well, <coughs> models can cope with this easily. I mean, if the model is, is well configured, this is not a problem. But well configured means that we are imposing in, on the Atlantic something really good. I mean, even um, there's a work by Fanny Adloff uh, that is about to be published showing that even if you are using a global reanalysis which assimilates altimetry, the results inside the Mediterranean are not good enough. So you need to, to tune this force in a bit more to, to, to have good, good solutions inside the, the Mediterranean. And then if we talk about circulation, then really the models are not able to produce, at least these regional climate models are not able to produce uh, good circulation patterns that are comparable to, to altimetry. Um, so, when we are evaluating the models, we have to ask ourselves which components are we val uh, validating. If we are using the whole time series from the tight gauge, I mean total sea level with all the components, probably we'll, have a, we'll get a good result, but it's because we are solving these two components that they are not to be true. I mean, they are, can be solved with 2D models. So if we really want to be honest, we have to filter out all this that we already know we are doing well, 
and focus on those that terms that are more complicated. So just to, to finish, um, well, basically the message is that the, um, to, to evaluate complex models, I think it's useful to, to just stop and, and try to understand the, the function of the model in the simplest way. So the model should reproduce this, the, the basic features of the system that we, we know they are there. Also in the Mediterranean, there are a lot of things going on at different scales, different uh, special and time scales, and the evaluation of the models should be done uh, accordingly with what we want to, to assess. I mean, when we are running a model to, to, to simulate the wellings, we must validate the wellings. It's not useful to validate sea level um, just uh, and, see the, and say that the model is working properly. Uh, and then still, there are different open issues that are also important either for the regional models at the, at the basin scale model, like the water mass formation rates, uh, the mean circulation, especially in some regions, and or the role of mesoscale and submesoscale on, on the long term. Um, and for this, this is a claim, this is where observations come. Uh, we really need much more observations and a, a joint effort between the observational studies and the, the model. And that's all. Uh, the only thing I want to do some advertising, we have an open position in, at IMEDEA for Mediterranean climate modeling. So if you know any candidate, please contact me. So that's all.